unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Chapter 8, verses 31. The Bible says, Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, the Jews which believed on him, He said, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. He said, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples? Indeed. He said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples? Yes. Jesus said to them, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples? Indeed. Praise God. The word therefore continuation is menor. Right? The very word for abiding. If you abide in my word, then are ye my disciples? What is the meaning of Menor? If you stay present to me, you're my disciple. If you stay present, you understand? I'm not saying if you stay attending fellowship. If attending fellowship is the outward duty. But are you present? Praise God. The Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The sad experience is that every time we bring that scripture, people allude it to death only. Physical death. But there's something deeper than that. The Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You can never have an experience of the presence of Almighty God until you're absent from the body. Hallelujah. The biggest limitation in the life of every believer in this world is the flesh. The body. It's our biggest limitation. Yet it's the only thing that gives us access to the earthly realm. Because the earthly realm cannot carry full experiences without a body. That is why the Bible says that every seed requires its own body. Are we together? Every seed requires its own body. Every seed requires its own body. There cannot be a seed without a body. Hallelujah. Even the devil, he could not come to tempt without using a body. Because spirits in the earthly plane require bodies. Hallelujah. Even God, he could not redeem mankind until he took on the body. Because spirits require earthly bodies. To access the earthly world, we need bodies. Yet, in their own sense, they are all our own limitations. That is why when Paul, the apostle, is returning to that experience, he says, for we which are in the body do groan. He says that every time we are in the body, he says we do groan. He says, for we in this we groan, honestly desiring to be clothed upon our house, which is from heaven. You understand? Next verse. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Praise God. There's a place where we we feel like we are naked. Because we need a heavenly body. We are limited if we are functioning only in the earthly body. Earthly bodies can't go through walls. Are you hearing me? Earthly bodies are limited with geographical location. And Paul says, herein we grow. You understand? Because he wants to get to a point where, at the end of the day, immortality will be what? Swallowed up with life. Hallelujah. And that life which is of God, that we get to a point where we are fully functioning in the life which is of God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. So there is a groaning for every child of God. Of course, many of you may not understand this, but there ought to be a groaning. For this corrupt people must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. We must put on immortality. We must be at a place where the life of God is. is working in our spirits. Somebody say amen. amen. Now let's continue the next verse in John 1, 32. Now the next verse says, And you shall know... Read the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Do you see that? He says, If you abide in me, if you may know in me, if you stay present to me in the spirit, then are ye my disciples. And he says, And you, because of being present with me consistently, you shall know 
the truth. And the truth shall what? Set you free. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Firstly, be continuously present in the word. Be continuously present in the word. Then you're the disciple. And because you're a disciple, then he says, and you shall know the truth. And what happens to that truth? It does what? That truth sets you free. Somebody say amen. The truth does what? Sets you free. Next verse. And they answered him, we be Abraham's seed, and we never, were never in bondage to any man. How says thou that you shall be made free? We don't understand what you mean. And the next verse says, Jesus answered them, says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Next verse. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. What does the next verse say? If the son therefore, he repeats it, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Read it again. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And what does the next verse say? I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. Next verse. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus says unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. The reason why you don't do the works of Abraham is because you're not Abraham's children. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Now let me start preaching. When the Bible says that if you continually stay present, you become disciples of God. And then you know the truth. You understand? In other words, the pattern of knowledge is this. That we stay present before God to know truth. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to tell you. That's why he says, and you shall know the truth. And when that truth comes, the Bible says, then you're what? Set free. Are we together? Are we together? Now, the Lord has been speaking to me consistently about how we understand truth. Christians understand truth. And perhaps why we're having a big issue in the body of Christ today regarding what men define as truth. And I'm going to say this. If the Bible has said that the place of truth is simple to make a man free, then the life of Christianity is supposed to be a life of freedom because we know truth. That is why when Paul is speaking to Titus, he speaks of a place of how he is a bond servant called to the elect of God. Who speaketh the truth that must them to godliness? You understand? He says, I'm Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith that is God's elect, and, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. The true translation is, which leads to godliness, which fosters godliness, which manifests godliness. In other words, to the degree of truth I know is to the degree I manifest God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. If I don't know truth, I cannot manifest God. I can carry a form of godliness that can represent and be represented as a man who is continually in the presence of God because they see me on Sunday, they see me on Saturday, they see me in overnight prayers, they see me in the midweek services, they see me in lunch hours and everywhere I am. But the challenge is that I don't manifest something that comes because I must not choose. And this is the deception that I've seen in the church most painfully. That we can live in a place where truth is not there, but the forms of godliness manifesting every day in our lives are accepted in our souls as God. And we consistently now start living in a life of deception. And that is why Proverbs 1 7 tells you that wisdom is the principal thing. But it says, but with all thine getting, get understanding. I know wisdom is wonderful, but in all your getting, get understanding. Because I believe that one of the biggest challenges that we're having in the body of Christ today is a place where men do not have understanding. They do not have a revelation of insight. Insight is there, but it is not revealed. They see things that don't make sense. And then we use our own human mind to make sense of what we think is, which is not. Are you hearing me? And then the assumptions are that we might put up a certain form of prayer and allegiance and submission to God, but in those cells, in those things, in their own, 
They are not what God actually looks at. The way we are thinking is not in understanding of His word. Hallelujah. I'll give you an example. One time I gave a story of a guy. I don't know whether some of you have ever heard of this story. There was a guy, they used to call him St. Patrick. He was walking in Ireland. And then he found uh, a serpent had bitten a what? A kid. And this serpent had bitten a child. And the woman was crying. And he asked the woman, why are you crying? And the woman said, the serpent has bitten my baby. And my baby might die. And he said, where's the serpent? And they said, the woman said it has entered in the bush. Where? That direction. And St. Patrick went in there. And then he looked through and found the serpent. And then he held it in his own hands. And he said, from today, serpents are banished out of Ireland. And that was the last day by the history of the world that it was recorded to see a serpent in Ireland. Every snake knew from that day that St. Patrick banished us. There were spiritual boundaries that told these snakes that when they get to the borders of Ireland, there is a guy who was anointed. He did not a thing. And it was established. Are you hearing me? Whether you get, you, you might not know the borders of Ireland, but when you get in any of those borders and they told you that this is Ireland, snakes don't cross there. They feel that there was a decree that was released by a man years and years ago, but it still has effect up to this day. And I said, God, what manner of man can speak to beasts that look like they don't understand language, but they listen and they can't cross borders? God help us. God help us. But we're dealing with Christianity that is void of power. Men are believers. Ten years we're believing. Twenty years we're still believing. Thirty years we're still believing. Forty years we're still believing. And the Bible says, "Ye shall decree a thing, and it shall be established. He says, whatever you loosen on the earth, it shall be loosened in the heaven. He said, whatever you bind on the earth, it shall be bound in heaven. As a matter of fact, if you read that from the Amplified, you'll understand that the challenge is where we function from. The Amplified says, truly I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, listen, must be what is already forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on earth, must be what is already permitted in heaven. Ultimate question, who has permitted it or this qualified it in the heavens? Still you. Some people think that it means God. No, listen, that scripture means that whatever you declare improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven, again by you. Again by you. In other words, before we manifest on the earth, we manifest in the heavenly places. Are you hearing me? Before we do anything on the earth, it must be done in the heavenly places. Our weapons are not carnal. The Bible says they are mighty in God. They pull down strongholds. Cast down imaginations. That's how they are. We don't fight physical battles. Our experiences are spiritual. God wants to raise a church of people who know how to execute stuff from the heavenly places. That on the earth when they are speaking, they are already speaking what they have already fixed. I said they are already speaking what they have already fixed. It is possible to function in that plane. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. So, I'm raised in nominal Christianity. I see people die every day the wrong way. And they steal explanations. But every time I look in the scriptures, I feel there is a contradiction. I feel there is a contradiction. And no doubt people will explain. Oh, this one died because this happened. This one happened because this happened. I know why this happened. It's because you didn't do this. I know why you didn't do this because this happened. And I know why, it's, no, yes, I understand that. But where is the place of truth that must make a man free? People fight demons from year one of their salvation. Year 10 of their salvation. Year 20 of their salvation. And all they have to show is gray hair and and a coarse voice because they've been praying every day. They've been casting out every day. They've been rebuking every day. And you look at the life of a Christian and they look beaten by the devil. Some start to even relate their past lives before they were born again and they realize they were better. 
When they enter the life of salvation, it's as though they enter the dungeon of being punched by the devil every day in the name of Jesus. I found an old woman the other day, she was fasting for 40 days. Why? So you, the Lord had revealed her that, uh, that there are some demons in her. Oh God, I said, men fast for the devil. Somebody one time sent us a message and, and, and they were doing uh, drives. You understand? Because the, the day before, huh? some devil worshippers drove through a certain city in the US. So when devil worshippers drove there, somebody sent us a message and said, ah, now let us also make a prayer drive. I told them, heaven no. You understand? Come on, I cannot. I cannot. I said, why? Because you see, if the devil does something, and then we counterattack it, and then he does another thing, and then we counterattack it, who is ahead of the game? Come and help me, who is ahead of the game? The devil didn't plan for us, we plan for him. Are you hearing me? We are usually counterattacking. We are already waiting for the next attack. In the name of Jesus, pooh. Then after that, another one comes. In the name of Jesus, pooh. Then after that, another one comes. In the name of Jesus, we are just counterattacking. And he's enjoying, why? Because he knows he's wasting our time. He knows that these men are ignorant. Let me tell you, the devil wastes time for ignorant men. He knows. He knows. He knows. Listen, there are people the devil can't waste time on. The other day I dreamt a silly dream. And I woke up and I said, and I went to bed. That was enough. I didn't need to address it. I didn't need to address it. He knew what I meant. He knew what I meant when I said, he knew what I meant. In my head I was thinking, how dare you think I'm at a level of dreaming that kind of dream and you think I'm going to lose appetite and sleep, you must be silly. We are not ignorant of your devices. I just, I cheered at him and I did my own business. In my head I was saying, let me see you do it. That day I'll disorganize hell. I mean, they'll write it on history that that guy came that... I mean, you have to get to a point where the devil says, Paul we know. Apostle Christ we know. Put your name. But who are you? Listen, demons have to sit in demon school to study you. Who is... Minister... That person is the one who did this. That person is the one who did this. And then that person did this. And then that person did that. And then they did this and then they did that. Because that's how it's supposed to be. So I start to ask myself, if it is truth, why isn't it bringing God? If it is truth, why isn't it bringing God? I was sharing with a man of God. And I told him something. That I was watching a documentary some time back and they were showing cave snakes you know cave snakes? snakes that are in caves and some snakes are raised in caves and many of these caves are dark and because these caves are dark for some time when these snakes are raised in darkness many of them scientists discover they run blind you understand? They run blind. When they run blind, they don't lose the sense of function around the familiar territories. It's like one time we went to Mbali, and I found a guy who was born blind, but he knew the area where he lived. Now, I didn't know he was blind. The guy went to fetch water, then after that he went to the kitchen, and, and he was doing everything, and then... I found him on the road, I said, hello sir, I put my hand, and I realized the guy that I see. So when the guy said, man, that guy showed me an attitude. He said, no, 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 the guy is 100% blind. I said, well, are, you, are you sure? There is nothing. Like, no, nothing, nothing, totally, the guy is blind. I said, how, how then does he do all this? He said, no, 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 he coaches to the area. Some Christians are like that. There was a time their eyes could see and they knew where the fun was. They became blind. They've not forgotten where the fun is. Are you hearing me? If you want to know their blindness, take them to unfamiliar territory. Carry them from one place like this and then throw them somewhere else like those snakes. When they, even if there is light, get this snake out of darkness. Take it in light. 
and put it there. Out of darkness, and take it in light. You realize if you start knocking walls, then you don't know. This thing is what? Blind. There are people who are at a level where light no longer has effects on them. Because the blindness is not on the things, the blindness is on them. He says, for if this gospel is hid, it is hid to them which are what? Which are perishing. Let the light of this glorious gospel should shine and do what? To give what? The image of God that should shine unto them. Because if it shines unto them, their light changes. Now, the challenge is, it's not that truth doesn't come anymore. Because truth is light. No. They reject it. They simply reject it. Because they've had a form of darkness for so long and they have survived around familiar territory. And sometimes familiar territory is pulpit. I can preach the gospel for so long to know what to preach. But every day I have a sermon. But said I'm dead. And that's what the Bible says, that when the blind lead the blind, what happens? They fall in a dish. Because he knows that there is a blindness. And Paul speaks of this blindness in part every time Moses is being read. But I mean that we can get to a point, you see this is the challenge, that veil can cover the eyes of a man every day. But because he has stayed in familiar territory, are you hearing me? Familiar territory. It's a familiar territory. He preaches the law and people still come. Familiar territory. Are you hearing me? He does whatever he does and people still come. Familiar territory. He does whatever he wants and people still come. Familiar territory. You understand? But let that man wake up anymore and he looks back and they are not there. What happens? What happens? It is hard for some people to turn to repentance. Very hard. Because the blindness that has eaten them up also frustrates See. Let me tell you something. You remember the Bible when it says that do not be like the Gentiles? When the Bible speaks of not being like the Gentiles, he speaks of an, an experience where they, they, the Bible says, in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding, what? What, what is the understanding done to? Darkened and being what? Alienated, not separated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness in their hearts. Any man who doesn't walk in the life which is of God has a blindness in the heart, in part, or in full. So when Paul says, do not be like, it means you can be like. It's possible to be born again and be like a Gentile. The Bible says that they, 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 they walk in the vanity of their mind. They are having their understanding. It's darkened. What, the part of them that has understanding, it is darkened. And what happens? They are separated from the life which is of God. They live lives like normal men. There is nothing about them that is supernatural. I refuse to be like that. I said I refuse to be like that. I refuse to be like that. How can I be born again and be broke? How can I be born again and be beggarly? How can I be broke and be sick? How can I be broke and fail? I cannot fail. I cannot fail. For God who commanded the light to shine of darkness, the Bible says, has shine in our hearts to give what? To give the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. That's what he did. He commanded light to shine out of darkness. He said, let there be light. Let there be light. And I like it because God knew in the beginning, the Bible says, if you go back to Genesis, He says, in the beginning, yeah, God created the heaven and earth. In the next verse, and the earth was without form and void. And listen, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep. Why on the deep end? Why is gross darkness on the face of the what? Of the deep. Because you see, when the you see, let me let me let me make you understand this. The righteousness of God determines how high a man will go in the spirit. The judgments of God define how deep a man will go in God. You understand? Psalms thirty six verse six. 
The psalmist defines that experience and he says, Thy righteousness, he says, is like the great mountains. What are they? High. And he says, Thy judgments are a great deep. You understand? In other words, the judgments of God define how deep we go in God when we understand His judgments. And the righteousness of God determines how high we go in God. However, the depth defines the height. For every beauty, as high as it can go, it will be for how deep it is dark. For every tree, as high as it can stand, it will be for how deep the roots are. But the challenge is that the depth is not seen with our naked eyes. Though the heights are seen, the manifestations are seen, the power is seen, the glory is seen, the demonstration is seen, but depth cannot be defined by the naked eye. It is something spiritual. Now, there is a place I have seen where the Bible speaks of an experience where there's, there's a signification of the shaking of those things which cannot remain. That those things which must remain shall what? Shall remain. Let's see. The Bible says, See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not the... If we escape not who refused him that spoke on the earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from the heaven. Uh -huh. Whose voice, listen, that shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, once more, I set not only the earth, but the heaven. Now let me make you understand this. If you go in the testimony before, he was speaking of the mountain at which we have come. But you are not come, listen, unto the man that might be touched. That was Sinai. Right? Sinai could be touched where the law was. And that burn with fire, no unto blackness and darkness and tempest. And he says, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, which voice they that heard and treated the word that should not be spoken to them anymore. Listen, they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it should be stoned or thrust through the dark. That was the glory of the law. When the law came, men heard it and they could not hold it. It was too much. Literally the world was shaken, the earth was shaken when the law came. Are you with me? And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. The law came with the glory. The law came with the glory that men, they, they literally feared, they were afraid, greatly afraid. And literally the earth shook. You understand? He says, but ye are come, listen to the difference. Ye are come unto Zion. And unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, uh -huh, to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and the spirits of just men made perfect. Uh -huh, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Now listen. So, it says, see that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on the earth, much more, listen, shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Now listen what happens. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now, but now, he has promised saying, yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but I shake the heavens. There's a move coming. It's not going to shake the earth only. No, it will shake the earth. It will shake the heaven. Men will preach and the heavens will stand up and say, Makatala Pakayaraba. I'm saying the thing that is coming on the earth is not going to set the earth only. It's also going to set the heavens. Men are going to preach angels down. Men will want, come on. Men are going to do things and people from heaven will say, wow, what is that? Men are going to speak stuff and men in heaven are going to say, ay, 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 ay. why did you call us quickly? We should have been there in the body to access this message. I mean, the Bible says Stephanos preached. The dispensation of the New Testament life. He said he preached and the heavens opened. He, he, he preached something and heaven could not close. Heaven
heaven wanted to access everything this guy spoke on the earth. And he being full of the Holy Ghost, he looked steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus, he got up. We know the guy stood there on the right hand of the Father. But Stephan was preached and Jesus literally got up. He says he saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened. And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Why? There was something coming out of this guy. The heavens couldn't close. The heavens couldn't close. And that is what is about to happen. Men are going to speak stuff. And the heavens will get our attention. People are going to watch him. And Apostle Paul will lose appetite. People are going to speak to God. And Peter will lose peace. Why? Because what is coming is not only going to shut the earth. Kampala is still small. That is why I tell people we've not yet started. When we start, you will know. It's never written in the history of the world that the Son of Man left his seat. After he had defeated his enemies, the Bible says he sat. He sat down at the right hand of God. But some guy pulled a mystery. And the guy said, no. I have a feeling I have a feeling we are moving into a time where men are going to minister and God will stand up and say there were times the men were on the earth but the glory that we are moving in is going to change things oh what a God oh what a God and the Bible says and all this obtained a good testimony through faith but they did not receive the promise praise the Lord Jesus Christ and he says God having something better for us that their testimony will not be fulfilled besides us there are people right now I mean read it and only through having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise all of them they, they, they tore the mouths of lions, waxed valiant in battle, subdued kingdoms. They did miracles. Women received back their dead. All of those miracles were there. He says, and all of those guys, he says, he says go ahead, hey, give the Amplified of that. Amplified from there. Read. And all these, though they won divine approval by means of their faith, they did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised. Hey. Because God had Luvega grace in mind and had something better and greater in view for us so that they, these heroes and heroines in faith, should not come to perfection apart from us. And then I saw Joshua in heaven telling Apostle Paul, I stopped the sun, but that is nothing. There's a people coming. They're on the earth right now. 2016. They are breathing and eating food. They are normal men. But God said that our testimony cannot be perfected. Until those guys do stuff. Listen. Listen. If a man who throws the sun, the Bible says it's a good promise and testimony. But he didn't receive the thing. God is saying that's not it. If there is a sun in heaven, we are going to preach. And literally that sun freezes. We are entering into a place where men will minister. And the whole heavens just... Get, I mean, you enter heaven and go like, whoa! You understand? You understand? Why? Because there is something that came out of a man's spirit. <laughs> Let, let's go back to... The Hebrews. He says, yet once more. He says, and this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken. Why are they shaken? Because of their depth. As of those things that are made. That those things which cannot be shaken, he may remain. Are you hearing me? That those things which cannot be shaken, they may remain. What does the next verse say? Is it there? Wherefore, he says, we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. Let us have the law. No, let us have 
grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Because what is upon our lives, listen, what can shake us is because of our roots. God is literally digging the church to deep. The days of scratching the surface are over. The days of playing church are over. The days of preaching things that men don't understand, they are over. The, the, those days of politics in church, they are coming to an end. We are getting to a point where we, listen, where men are going to literally be approved by heaven before even the earth knows. Days are coming where the clouds are going to become red because the man has preached the deep mess. Make a rebassa. Haste those days, God. Haste them. Because I see those days coming. I see those days coming. Because the prophecy was spoken. He said, In the last days, knowledge shall increase. And the glory of God, the Bible says, shall fill the world. As the waters do what? Cover the sea. Imagine the experience of how water covers the sea. That is how glorious. That is how glorious. That is how glorious. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. There's a knowledge coming, but it is, listen, we are going to do things, and men are going to tell us, is that God? Because we read in the Bible, but we didn't see that. Where did this come from? I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. They will say we read about these things, but where this is different. God bring it. God bring it. Remove those things where made Christians are still believing God for jobs and, and visas to go to the United States and children and husbands. Satisfy us while it is still early that we can look at the things that cannot be shaken. So, he speaks of the mountains as high and righteousness. And he speaks of depths as judgment. Meaning, the judgments of God establish the depth in God. And the righteousness of God establishes the height of God. But never forget, the highest level of dimension in the spirit defines the deepest realm of judgments. The way God judges matters is not the way men understand and interpret the judgments of the spirit. And that is why the Bible calls him the righteous judge. Because the place of righteousness from which he judges things, you understand, is more in the mind of how he has intended our end. You understand? You see, there's an experience where James gives an example of our suffering, the suffering of Job, you know. He brings a certain example. And he says, for brethren, we know of the suffering of our brother Job. You know, take my brother, the prophets who have spoken in the name of uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. I'm talking of Job. Uh-huh. Behold, we count them happy. Listen, which end you are? For ye have heard of the patience, listen, of Job, and have seen the end of Job. And have seen the end of Job. Answer me. And have seen the end of Job. And have seen the end of his prosperity. You see this man going through patience and endurance. And at the end, God is there. That Job's end is actually the Lord. Not the Lord. No. The end of the Lord. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? This is the man in the other valley. The Old Testament. Are you hearing me? And then he raises an eternal excellence. With which he begins as God. And he says that if a man is born again, he's a new creation in Christ. For all things are passed away and all things are new. And now all things are of God. The beginning of that creature, the moment that man becomes born again, God. Job had to suffer to see his end. The Christian is supposed to begin from Job's story. The end of the end of the end of the the end. The, the end of Job. Where he finishes, eh? and God restores him. That's the beginning of salvation. But then Christians go through things and then they say, you remember Job? And then God by precept tells us, look, 
The end of Job was that I wanted to push him to me. You, you begin in me. You, your life begins God. In the beginning. I said in the beginning. God. That's your beginning. You begin God. He calls himself the author and the finisher of your faith. He's the one who began it. Your story begins. How can you lose appetite over a situation? How can you even think you can die of a virus? How? Your beginning. God doesn't want to take you through your story. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He, I said he doesn't want to. That is why the man by experience says, brethren, we are persuaded of the things which accompany salvation. There are things I have to be because I'm born again. There, I, 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 I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. Tell your neighbor. Tell him there are things I must be because I'm born again. Whether you want it or not. Whether you prophesy it on my life or you curse me. Whether you intend or you don't. Whether your mother wants it. Whether you went to school. Whether you didn't go to school. Wh- I am persuaded of things that accompany salvation. There are things that can't happen to me. You remember when Paul is talking about his experiences of how he's gone between as us to be in the flesh or to be with the Lord. He says, For I'm straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart, to be with Christ, which is far better. Next verse. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And what happens? Next verse. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide. I, I. <laughs> Paul doesn't expect to die early. Listen. He says, I'm torn between to be with the Lord, which is far better, or to be in the flesh for your sake. But because I've chosen to be in the flesh, I am confident I will abide. It's a choice. No, he says, I can choose to go to heaven or not. But now that I've chosen to be in the body, I can't die tomorrow. I can't die next week. It's a choice. Tell your neighbor, life is a choice. Tell them, life is a choice. Give me the amplified of that. Give me the Say, since I'm convinced of this, I know that I shall remain and stay by you all to promote your progress in joy and belief. That is the only reason why Paul couldn't be killed. He chose. He says, choose this day before your life and death. You choose. He says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. He didn't say the power of life and the power of death. Life has no power. Death has no power. The tongue does. Choose to leave. I say choose to leave. Tell yourself, I refuse to die early. Regardless, I refuse to die early. I'll die when I'm finished. With the work the Lord has called me to do. It's a choice. I carry the confidence. Say it. I carry the confidence. That I shall abide still in the flesh until I fulfill the God given mandate upon my life. I refuse to die young. I refuse to die early. I refuse to die. I choose to live. I just choose to. I choose to. I told God. I told God. Never take me home when I'm not ready to go. Because I know I'm living there forever. There's no rush. Let me produce fruit on the earth. I don't want my end to be the Lord took him. No. I want my end to be they talked with the Lord and he went. I don't know that you understand. You see, I understand when you say Enoch walked with God and he was no more. 
Me, I'm not reckoning with God. No. Me, God is walking in me. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. I'm not walking with God. God is walking in me. In Him I live. In Him I move. And I have my own being. Accidents are far from you. In the name of Jesus. Diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer. I suffer. You have the life which is of God. I said I have the life which is of God. Unlandmentary. I said unlandmentary. Okay, they were tarrying. And he says that this is not unland men. Land men don't tarry. The, they, they were unland and they could wait for the Holy Ghost. But when men land, they got to a level where they could come and ask, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? No, who received it? Because now we are land. You must get to a level. When you want money, you get it. When you want a job, you get it. For I know. Paul says, I know how to be full. I know how to be a best. So I'm both instructed to abound and be full. I want to get to a level. And I'm moving in a place where I must know what to do, when I want it, how I want it. We don't leave it to God. Say, ah, it is the will of God. If he wills, he'll take us there. No. God wants to raise the church. Where if you say, I want a million dollars, you know how to get it. For I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. The only challenge we had was the time issue. The time was an issue. That's why they say, having eyes they see not. Having ears they hear not. You understand? At least they should turn and be healed. But when it gets to Matthew, he said, For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their ears have closed. At least at any time, any time, any time, any time. The Bible says they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart. And what happens? And should be converted, and I should heal them. When the prophet prophesied about that very experience, he didn't put time. Because the first Adam did not understand the timing of the spirit. For the carnal man cannot receive, neither design the things of the spirit, for they are spiritually designed. Are you hearing me? Read the same scripture in Isaiah. He says, Have ye indeed, um, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of these people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes. Lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. There was no time there. There was no time there. Because the timing of the spirit is fourth dimension. It's fourth dimension. It's fourth dimension. It's fourth dimension. Not everybody in that dispensation understood the timing of the spirit. There are few instances. For example, the sons of Ishaka. The Bible says they had understanding of the times. There were only a few. It was not for the whole of Israel to know. It was a few gifts. Now in the dispensation of the New Testament... We have an answer from on high. The Bible says we know all things. I know my time. I know when I will die. I won't get surprised in the morning. In the name of Jesus. I know my next success. I know my next story. I know when I get married. I know when my child is born. I know. I must know. Why? Because I have an answer from on high. The future is not supposed to be a mystery. Tell your neighbor. The future is not supposed to be a mystery. Because now you have the timing of the spirit. And he says, this at any time. That means your miracle is in the timing of the spirit. That's why a man can spend 38 years, was it? Next to. And he says, every time I want to jump in, somebody comes in before me. And then he found the master of time. I said, he found the master of time. <laughs> And Jesus says that this is the order of the events. That water must be stirred up for men to be healed. But because I'm in charge of time, I can heal you now. You don't need a stirring of water. 
And that is when you're going to see miracles of how God is going to start to do things of a way it is expected. You thought it was going to come from some uncle, God is going to bring it through a stranger. You thought it was going to pass through a door, God is going to bring it through a window. You thought it was going to pass through the ceiling, it's going to dig the ground, but it must come. Tell your neighbor, it's my time. Turn to the other one and tell him, it's my time. So we realize, now the secret of access is in sight and hearing. The moment I can see in the spirit and hear, there is nothing that can deny me access. What do I mean? What you don't have, you have not seen and heard. Period. It's not your grandfather's devil. It's not the government. Simple. What you don't see happen in your life, you have not seen and heard. Because the true place of conversion is when men start to see and hear. God calls us to see and hear. So I realize, right, you mean your next job has to first be seen? Yes. You mean your marriage has to first be heard in the spirit? Yes. Yes. That is why faith comes by hearing. And he says, not by hearing the word, no. And hearing by the word. Do you want to hear? Hearing by the word. He said, hear, get the word in your spirit. Get it in your soul. There's somebody who had been believing God for jobs. Everywhere they put their applications, they failed. One time I came to them and I told them, what you've had at this level, no job can deny you. And they got a job. Why? Because there's a place you can get to. And even if you have a generational curse in your family, there is no way you cannot get married. You understand? There's a place you can get to. Even if the government is poor, there is no way you can sleep hungry. There is a level you can get to. That even if they lost the coffers of government and lock the shops, ravens fly and bring you food. There, there's That's why I realized the reason why we were not having results. We were shown the wrong thing and we had the wrong things. There is, no, there is nothing else. We were shown the wrong things and we were taught the wrong things. The things that entered our spirits could not convert us because they could not align us to the fourth dimension of time. And that is why men cannot understand why certain things happen quicker for some people and they don't happen for others. Quantum physics. There are shortcuts in higher dimensions. The world is not flat, it's bent because every time the height's coming, every time the height's coming, spaces fold in higher dimensions. Spaces fold in higher dimensions. This carpet, the distance from here and here is long, but I can fold it and shorten this. It's called shortcut. And he says, one day in the house of the Lord is like a thousand in the world. That means if you spend 24 hours in the presence of Almighty God, you can redeem 2.7 years. That's a thousand days. If you spend another two days, 2.7 times 2. If you spend another three days, 2.7 times 3. If you spend another four days, that means a man can spend three days and redeem eight years. Three days and redeem eight years. That is why you realize some men can struggle with anything and one day they see God and that's it. That's why I realized it's only one experience. It's not a million days, no. It's only one experience in the presence of Almighty God. Jesus went to the wilderness and he fasted. And the Bible says he came back in the power. That was the beginning of the second dimension of his function. Before that, he couldn't do a miracle. Even if he was the son of God. But he hid himself. Let me tell you, you must learn. Listen, that's why Hosea, I think Hosea 10, 12 says, 
He says, you must break your pharaoh grounds. You break them. It is time to seek the Lord until he reigns down righteousness. There's a point where we have, listen, I need to see a certain God. Those days of praying, like, 12, 2 minutes, they're over. Have you spent 24 hours praying? No. You spend 15 minutes praying and 6 hours on TV. You have a big problem. You speak with your broken up to 3 a.m. in the morning. You have a big problem. No man can pray in spirit and in truth for 24 hours. And his life is the same. Shortcuts come when we are in the presence. Strength will come when we wait upon the Lord. And that strengthening is the quickening of the spirit. The days of not praying have come to an end. We have to wake up and seek God. Tell him we have to stop sleeping. Tell him we have to stop sleeping. We have to stop sleeping. We have to, we have to break these grounds until God just reigns. Until a time where, like the Bible says, your doctrine and teaching is like rain. Deuteronomy 32 verse 2. He says, and my doctrine Come on. Hey. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, and my speech shall distill as the dew. That when you speak, men feel like help. Oh. Because, like Job says, there is hope even for a tree. That even if it be cut, the moment it gets the scent of water, no. Before even water touches it, no. He says, the moment it gets a scent of water, the Bible says there is hope. If it got down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof not to cease. Uh huh. What does the next verse say? Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, uh huh. Yet through the scent of water, the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant, even a dead tree. Now, know ye not? The men are like trees. I mean, if the blind man could see that they are like trees. Listen, saints. We are entering a place where when we start to speak, men will feel like that is what must make them grow. You will sit in places that when you open your mouth, men will say, no, this is what I need to grow. Souls must be one at every price. We'll spend our time, we'll spend our money, our resources, and everything we have. We will get to, listen, the dryness in the land is too much. You can sense the dryness. You can sense how frustrated the brooks are. Are you hearing me? You can feel it in your spirit regarding the lines of the brooks. But let me tell you, brooks dry, right? But brooks are resuscitated by men. They are resuscitated by men. Are you hearing me? I read that scripture somewhere. I'll show it to you one day. There's a place where God wants to use us. Eh? Because remember the hunger and famine? It's in the world. He says, in that day I shall send forth the what? The hunger. And a thirst for the wine. And he says, I will send a family in the land. Not a family of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of God. And what happens? And he says, and men shall what? Here, they shall wander from sea to sea, from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. And he says that the young virgins shall what? Shall faint because of what? Of thirst. Then in that time, the God who released the same family will give men doctrines of rain. He will give them doctrines of rain. And distilled dews will fall on their spirits. And men will hear something and say, no, this is what I've been looking for. It is my kind of thing. And it won't be on your preachers to be everywhere. You'll be in taxis and make one statement. A man will come out and start following you. Why? He says, Then shall get a hold of your lapel and say, Let us go with you, for we have heard that the Lord is going to go. Listen, many of you, your names are going to move ahead of you. 
men will hear about you before they see you. They'll say, I heard of a guy in Uganda. They call him Apostle Emma. Are you the one? What's your name? I heard of a woman. Listen. The Bible says the name of Jesus went ahead of him. Let me tell you something about the glory. There's a glory whereby God shifts your name. And it goes ahead of you. In the scriptures they give an example. Where the Bible says, and they had in the city. Of the name that Jesus had come. It was the first time he stepped in that city. And the Bible says they brought sick people. Because they had Jesus had come. They had the rumor. They didn't have Facebook. They were not on Twitter. They didn't have anything. But there was, if God can do it without Twitter and WhatsApp. And the Bible says, when he entered, it was noise that he was in. And straight away men were gathered together. And so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not such much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. We want to get to a certain place where when you enter a nation, the whole nation knows that you came. When you get into a certain district, the whole district knows that you entered. When you go into a company, from the top post to the guy down, they will say, Rebecca Grace, is in, put your name if you want. Then you tell them, oh, bring the sick. I say, bring the sick. When Smith, because what they say, when he left, I think, London, and, and he came to the United States, he found a woman with a goiter, slapped it off, he fell down, and he said, I came to preach the gospel to America. <laughs> Introduction. You enter a nation. Oh! Oh! You tell him it's the beginning. God tells them, tell that fox that your introduction remarks in university is the moment they take it to university. You open two blind eyes and tell them, go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is Lord. I have sensed the spirit that is going to make us famous for Christ. Not for ourselves. Men are going to want to be around you. People will tie themselves on you. They will follow you everywhere. Why? Because where can we go? For with you are the words of life. For with you are the words of life. I want to finish. Hey, Basatele. Let everything that you do start to feel like it is a rain on dry land. In the name of Jesus. Let everything that you do start to feel like it is due for freshness of every morning. In the name of Jesus. Everywhere you go, you will cause effects. I've seen worshippers that are going to start worshipping. Blind eyes will see. You, you listen. You, you, you won't listen. Listen. You won't even pray about it. You'll stand on the pulpit and start to worship your Lord. And as you raise me up, he says, I will draw men to myself. The presence of God is here. Are you hearing what he's doing? The presence of God is here. Hey, are you ready to receive it? Power of the Holy Ghost! Speak in other tongues. In the secret, the quiet place, stillness you are there, stillness you are there. There is greatness in you, child of God. In the secret, the quiet hour, only for you, because I want to know you more. I want to.
personally. I am reaching to the highest goal. And I might receive the prize. Resting on words, wishing every innocence. If you're here, 
and you've never given your life to Christ and you feel you need him today put up your hand and we lead you in a confession prayer you say I'm not born again God bless you I see a hand down there God bless you darling you say I want to receive Jesus God bless you you say I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior put up your hand God bless you God bless you I see another one there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Put them up so high. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now if you have put your hands up, repeat these words after me. Say Lord Jesus. I believe with my heart that you died and rose again. And I confess with my mouth your Lordship over my life. Both as Savior and Lord of my life. I'm born again. In Jesus' mighty name. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Venero, make manifest.